Hey, it's the last day of June. Extremely muggy. It's like you can swim in the humidity. Crazy. But I've had a lot of time to think. Had a hip replacement nine days ago. Had a lot of time to just sit. It wasn't really desirable. But it was important because it really fits into this Bible time video. It's taken me ten years to learn. And it's dying to myself. And by dying to myself, it is for furthering the kingdom of God. But I personally, when my desires have been redirected, I have direction, clarity, and purpose. All of these have been found. I've been seeking it for 10 years. I moved to Nashville just shy of 10 years ago in August. And I got baptized at 18. I'm 29 now. And I know as I get older, that depth and meaning of dying to myself is going to only get richer. But I'm super excited to share this with you now. Here's the big idea. By dying to ourselves, we no longer have to ask, God, please open the door. Instead, we'll be moved with the Spirit and then ask God, close this door, Lord, if I'm not supposed to go through it. I feel you're leading. I'm going. See the difference? It's kind of just petitioning to God, which we are commanded to do, and that has very important purpose. But there is a crusade, mission-driven, spirit-filled life that we can have by when we die to ourselves, we are operating with the Spirit, and we go. And then God closes the doors versus us just begging for one to be open. That's the big idea. Uh, that is not my idea. I'm going to quote who originally said that to me earlier in June. But let's go into a scripture that really anchors this. Matthew chapter 22, verses 35. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, tested him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in all? He probably knows. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's a verse I've been trying to memorize. And then a guy named Ken Davis who helps speakers. He's a comedian, very acclaimed guy. We spoke to our devotional at work, and it really reinterpreted things for me. And this is all quoting to him, especially the closed door thing. But here's the simple commands. Give God your body. Give God your will. Give God your mind. And I implemented the verse that I just read, which is, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So we do this by taking every thought captive. And by doing this, we can then test and approve of God's will and not have to question it. So many times, we're not giving our mind, our body, our will, we're not giving those things to God at the altar. We insist on doing it ourselves, kind of being selfish. And then, of course, we can't really question and test His good and perfect will. Uh, the, the, the verse Romans 12, 2 is, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and perfect and acceptable. And so that is the path I want to be on. It's taken me 10 years to get there, of really, well, it's the analogy of the door, where I, I used to just say, Lord, music, make music happen, open the door for music. But now, I learned this when I was actually exiting that career, is that I can operate with the Spirit. I feel led to maybe do some ministry over here. I feel led to go over here. I feel led to pursue the woman that I marry. But it's like I'm going in that direction because I'm with the Spirit. I'm closer. My will, my body, my mind, all those things are under the umbrella of taking every thought captive because that's how we give them to God at His altar. And then I feel the surge of the Spirit. But I have to die to myself. All those things can be channeled for good, amazing goodness, and be used for the kingdom, but in a fallen world, it initially starts very flawed. This does pivot our faith walk, and we have a responsibility to take these things captive. It's a daily discipline, like a muscle, and the next thought that happened to me in this month of June was our pastor, Rob Sweet, covering the book of Psalms in Psalm 1. He talks about, do we delight in God? Well, that's a wellspring of life right there to decide if we can take every thought captive. Are we even delighting in the Lord? And what does that look like? So let me dig into this verse. 
All right, start at the first Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields his fruit in its season, his leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. Verse 2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now, if you have an answer on like the context of theology, I don't think it means literal day and night, because then you wouldn't do things. But there is the principle of taking every thought captive, and more so focusing, what is my compass in life? What do I meditate on? Seriously, what drives my body, mind, will, soul? And... Earlier this year, it greatly started on just my path, which ultimately is 10 years. Of like, I had, to, I had to focus on eternal things. I, it's impossible for me to separate what matters day in and day out if I'm not focusing on eternal things. We'll default and delight in ourselves in whatever gives us the most instantaneous pleasure, honestly. But what gets complicated when we're in the church is then we'll kind of focus with certain moral parameters but we're still not really giving ourselves to God. We're not dying to ourselves. We're just kind of saying, I'll give this much to you, Lord, but I'll keep this. And if we're not having eternal lenses on, we will get wrapped up in whatever the thing is before us because we're not God. We don't see what that thing actually does. And it's so easy to get all consumed by that when God might just be using it as a thing that helps someone else's walk and we're supposed to go somewhere completely different. Until we die to ourselves in our flesh and just give it to God in meditation, prayer, we understand this word is a daily bread that every thought can eventually be led by this. Until we do all of that, we don't have a compass. We don't have this amazing delight because we feel the sovereignty of God and the Spirit leading us. We kind of feel alone and then it can go into legalism. And in this theme of dying to myself, I try to start each day having reconciliation with God that I deserve nothing. It's not in shame, but it's in total just humbleness that I'm trying to just go to God and accept the grace that I have this opportunity to live this day for Him. And that's what dying to myself actually means. I get to live this day for Him and put off these desires that from so many just lessons of history and people we know we follow the ways of man good luck finding that fulfillment but we can really follow this path of god and so when disruptions and things happen we're, we're not just completely derailed in our walk with god and we all have had that moment where something stressful happens boom we fall right off take every thought captive we do that by dying to ourselves and then we can really find this peace that we've been looking for you know, in this month, just as I've been like sitting at home, <laughs> icing my leg for nine days straight, uh, it's been interesting how my joy has shifted just in perspective of like being able to celebrate the success of other people, not getting too wrapped up in my own thing, dying to myself, figuratively dying to myself. It's a leg. I have another leg. I'm able to communicate like things are good. So by having this like centering daily, we can celebrate other people. And if I'm kind of recapping all of this, I can avoid being, and for me this is going into kind of Satan's territory where I get insecure, envious, just a mess where I'm not really letting God give any healing power to me. But I can really bypass a lot of that and invite the Spirit in by doing just the following. This is the recap. Dying to myself and surrendering to God, delighting, delighting in the law of God, which is our compass in a fallen world. Invite the Spirit in, follow Him, and how we're supposed to further the kingdom. What is your role? You have such purpose. What people? What local ministries? What family? What strangers are you supposed to allow maybe disrupt? Like, what are you supposed to do to further the kingdom with the Spirit? And after all these things, it's like, appreciate life. 
appreciate all of this. Because I think there's just so much joy there versus happiness and things. Things, like whatever. And then that ultimately leads to gratitude. Because by dying to ourselves, we can have gratitude and peace is found there. Ten years. Ten years has taken me to accept this truth versus chasing a vision I kind of just wanted to follow with music and all that for 10 years growing up playing um, as a kid. But if we're going to be transformed, do know that's not going to be easy at first. And that's why it's taken me 10 years. Submission, going to the altar of, the, of God, it feels scary. It feels dumb at times. It doesn't make sense with our anatomy. This fallen world it might even feel pointless. But if we create that space... If we allow ourselves to explore something new of dying to ourselves, I swear it can help us look outside of our own situation and begin to see things that actually make the most sense with eternal lenses. So blessings to you. Keep on pursuing this amazing journey God has for you to further his kingdom. It is so much bigger than a job. It is so much bigger than even just like your immediate circle. But yet he might use that circle to change everything. It's a great adventure. Thank you for watching.